Now, let's start the fundamentals of HPLC. This course is mainly focusing on the concepts and hardware of HPLC. We'll continue with the components consisting of HPLC. This slide compares the features of the typical detectors, which act as eyes of HPLC system. An absorbance detector that means a UV detector or a diode array detector is most commonly used in HPLC analysis. Compounds having conjugated double bonds or aromatic rings show high response on the absorbance detector. In general, the selective detectors, which can be applied to the limited target compounds tend to show high sensitivity. Some of UV absorbents provide luminescence phenomena at particular wavelengths, and they are detected by fluorescence detector that affords generally higher sensitivity than that of the UV detector. On the other hand, a refractive index detector, so-called RID has wide versatility of covering saturated hydrocarbons and saccharides that have no UV absorption. Generally, the sensitivity of RID affords rather worse sensitivity compared to that of UV detector. Furthermore, it cannot be employed with gradient elution due to large baseline drifting caused by varying mobile phase composition during analysis. An evaporative light scattering detector can be used with gradient elution for non-volatile compounds, but generally its sensitivity is not so good as that of UV detector. It is known that the calibration curve obtained by ELSD is not linear like other detectors. An electrical conductivity detector measures changes in electrical conductivity. It is mainly used for the analysis of inorganic ions that have no UV absorption. An electrochemical detector has an electrode in the cell, and when a voltage is applied, an oxidation or reduction reaction is induced for target compounds, and a weak current between the target compounds and the electrode is measured. Although applicable compounds that cause redox reactions is limited, it is generally expected to have higher sensitivity than that of UV detector. When a compound absorbs light energy at a particular wavelength in the UV visible region, the energy of electrons rises from the ground state to the excited state. This is UV absorption. The absorbance detector measures the intensity difference of the incident UV light to the flow cell and the transmitted UV light from the flow cell, which means UV absorption. The detection principle of the UV detector is explained in this slide. A schematic diagram of the UV detector cell is shown on the left side. Light of a particular wavelength, such as 260 nanometers, is irradiated from the left side of the cell. Normally the mobile phase flows continuously through the cell. If the mobile phase itself has a certain level of UV absorption, the intensity of transmitted light becomes slightly small. For example, an incident light with an intensity of 100 is absorbed by mobile phase in the cell to make transmitted light with an intensity of 90. This state represents the baseline level of the chromatogram. Here, if a sample compound with UV absorption reaches the detector cell from the column, further UV absorption is added. For example, if the sample compound provides UV absorption corresponding to intensity 50, the intensity of transmitted light is 90 minus 50 equals 40. The role of UV detector is to output an absorbance change as a voltage, that is transferred from the change of the transmitted light intensity corresponding to the concentration change within the cell. The red box Lambert Beer equation for calculating absorbance from the logarithm of the intensity ratio of incident light to transmitted light is a mathematical approximation and is replaced by an equation that multiplies a factor, the sample concentration, and the optical path length of the cell. As the optical path length L becomes longer, the transmitted light intensity E becomes smaller. In the left formula, a constant intensity of incident light E0 in logarithmic numerator becomes larger. So, the absorbance A is increased and the baseline is rising accordingly. The linear relationship between the absorbance, 
and the concentration of the sample compounds is guaranteed up to a certain concentration, so it is important to determine the concentration within this linear relationship range, called dynamic range. If the concentration is too high, the increase in absorbance is saturated, as shown in the graph on the right side. This phenomenon can be understood as a state in which the absorption of light is suppressed, because the sample compounds overlap each other in a cell at a high concentration and the shadow of the preceding molecule interfere with the entire explosion of the following molecule. In addition to UV detectors, a photodiode array detector, so-called PDA detector measures UV absorbance as well. A UV detector measures the change in absorbance at particular wavelengths such as 260 nanometers. By contrast, a PDA detector measures change in absorbance at all wavelengths included in specified wavelength range from 200 nanometers to 700 nanometers for example. Once the data is obtained, the chromatogram at any desired wavelength can be reproduced. Furthermore, the spectrum at any desired retention time can be drawn as well. This allows for more accurate identification by comparing the spectra of the standard and the target peak, in addition to the ordinary retention time identification. Additionally, the PDA detector provides the peak purity estimation using spectra comparison, the peak deconvolution by 3D data simulation, and the expanded dynamic range determination. The PDA detector is a versatile and easy to use expandable UV detector. One of the important profits of the PDA detector is a purity evaluation using comparison of the standard and the target peak spectra. The left side of this slide shows the chromatogram of real sample, and the right side shows the overlaid UV spectra at the peak top retention time indicated in the left side chromatogram and standard 1. In the comparison of spectra on the right, the two spectra are almost identical indicating that the target peak seems free from co-eluting compound. On the other hand, if the shape of the two spectra are greatly different, the existence of co-eluting compounds is strongly suggested or it is suspected that the identification is completely wrong. As described here, the PDA detector affords improved identification performance compared to that of the ordinary UV detector. Summarizes the UV detector points. UV detectors are the most common detector in HPLC. It is more stable and easier to handle than other detectors. In addition, Many organic compounds that can be measured by HPLC absorb light in the UV visible range, so the application range is wide. By the way, what kind of material absorbs the light energy of a specific wavelength in the UV visible region? Many compounds with UV absorption have double bonds when the molecule is represented by a structural formula. In addition, a molecule having a structure, such as a benzene ring in which multiple double bonds form a resonance structure generally has a larger absorption, than a molecule having a single double bond in the molecular structure, and it is often seen that it has a larger absorption at the longer wavelength side. Therefore, compounds without double bonds, such as sugars and saturated hydrocarbons, cannot be detected with a UV detector because their UV absorption is very low or considered impractical. The PDA detector is a multifunctional, easy to use, extended UV detector because it provides a lot of information in a single analysis. This is the explanation for a fluorescence detector. The fluorescence detector measures the intensity of emitted light from target compound caused by irradiation with UV light. As is described in this slide, irradiation to the fluorescent compound in ground state provides excited state where molecular energy level is higher than that of ground state. Then the molecular energy state is turned to semi-excited state due to the loss of some molecular energy as vibration and rotation. From this semi-excited state, most of fluorescent molecules emit their energy as light to return to the ground state. 
This phenomenon is called fluorescence. Generally emission wavelength is larger than that of excitation wavelength, because some excitation energy is lost by molecular movement so that emission wavelength is larger than excitation wavelength. A number of naturally fluorescent compounds is very limited, and one of the typical fluorescent compounds are polyaromatic hydrocarbons such as anthracene shown in this slide. The fluorescence detector affords excellent selectivity and sensitivity for fluorescent target compounds. In this slide, pros and cons of the fluorescence detector are listed. Specific combination of excitation wavelength and emission wavelength affords selective and high sensitivity detection. By contrast to the UV detection, the applicable range of fluorescence detection is limited due to limited number of compounds that have natural fluorescence. Very low background level derived from detection principle of measuring emitting light results 1000 fold higher sensitivity compared to that of the UV detector in some cases. Another application to fluorescence detector is a derivatization method. In the derivatization process, a chemical reaction of two or more compounds including the target compound is designed to form fluorescent compound. We have the OPA labeled amino acid analysis system and the arginine labeled reducing sugar analysis system. A refractive index detector, so called RID, employs light refraction phenomenon on gas liquid surface. The figure on the right side shows a cross section of the RID cell that has two separated chambers in it. One is a reference cell filled with mobile phase and the other is a sample cell connected to the flow path of HPLC. Before analysis, the reference cell is completely displaces with fresh mobile phase by switching the flow path to HPLC side. Then flow path is switched back to the original connection to HPLC side to prepare for starting analysis. When target compound does not exist in the sample cell, both cells are filled with same mobile phase so that no refraction occurs and the light beam proceeds straightly. Then the target compound reaches to the sample cell, light beam is bended due to the change of refractive index of the sample cell. RID can detect this change of refractive index. In this slide, pros and cons of the RID are listed. The RID is called an universal detector, because all compounds that show different refractive index from that of mobile phase can be detected in principle. It is sensitive against co-eluting interferences due to its non-selectivity in detection. It is also sensitive against temperature and pressure fluctuations. By contrast, the RID shows small sensitivity difference depending on the target compounds. This feature affords rough abundance proportion of sample components directly so that the RID is commonly used in GPC analysis for calculating molecular weight distribution. Its sensitivity is generally worse compared to that of UV detector. Gradient elution cannot be employed due to greatly changing refractive index of mobile phase during gradient elution. RID is commonly used for saccharide that have no UV absorption. Next one is evaporative light scattering detector, so called DLSD. The target compounds are converted to a suspension of particles in a gas phase by a nebulizer and heated, while the mobile phase is evaporated. These particles are very fine and when they are exposed by irradiation, the incident light is scattered to surroundings. An ELSD measures this scattered light to detect the target compounds. It does not provide linear response to concentration, but gives exponential response. So log log plot is essential to obtain liner calibration curve. ELSD cannot be connected to PREP LC as it is. In this slide, pros and cons of the ELSD are listed. It is so-called universal detector like the RID and can detect most of compounds except for volatile compounds, but it provides generally poor selectivity. 
The ELSD shows small sensitivity difference depending on target compounds as the RID dot. In contrast to the RID, it can be applied to gradient dilution. Furthermore, baseline stability and sensitivity are superior to those of the RID when the mobile phase is completely evaporated because there's no background scattering light. Non-volatile buffers and high boiling solvents cannot be used as mobile phase. Phosphate buffers, which are often used in the mobile phase of HPLC, cannot be used due to its non-volatility. The volatilization of the mobile phase does not work well in high boiling solvents, and the target component cannot be detected. It is remarked that the ELSD requires a nitrogen generator and related exhausting facility. Typical target compounds are saccharide and surfactants. Finally, this is the introduction of the electrical conductivity detector, so-called CDD. This detector measures the electrical conductivity of ionic compounds in the cell. It is essential for ion chromatography. As is shown in the left, the bulb does not turn on when the electrode is placed in pure water that does not contain ions. By contrast, as shown in the right, in water containing NaCl, ions play a role to conduct electricity, and the bulb turns on. The CDD measures the change in electrical conductivity based on this principle when target ionic compounds pass through the cell. It is sensitive to the temperature fluctuation and afford 1.7% change of conductivity for every 1C increase of the temperature. Consequently, the CDD cell is normally set up in the column oven. In this slide, pros and cons of the CDD are listed. The CDD selectively measures ionic compounds in aqueous solution at high sensitivity and is essential for ion chromatography. Organic acids are ionic compounds that have UV absorption. Shimadzu focused on the ionic feature of organic acids and developed organic acids analysis system that employs post-column pH buffering method to obtain high sensitivity compared to UV detection. The target compounds are cations, anions, and organic acids. That is all for this part. Thank you for your attention. Excellence in Science Shimazu